So I would like to introduce you to Greg from Fortify, who's here to talk about APIs. Thanks, and uh, good afternoon. This is the API assessment primer. The objective of this session will be to give an overview of testing um, APIs. I uh, hope to give uh, the attackers and hackers in the audience a high-level overview of a, an approach to assessing uh, APIs. And for the developers in the room, hope to give you th some things to think about while, while you're developing. So see. quick agenda. I'll do a quick introduction. Then we'll talk about why API security matters, why it's important. Then we'll talk about um, what to consider when you're conducting uh, assess security assessments. And then I'll give you a uh, bulk of the talk will be uh, discussing various uh, uh, vulnerabilities that are common in APIs. And then I'll give you a few takeaways. So a quick introduction, I'm Greg Patton. I'm based in Houston, Texas. I am the uh, static source code um, testing manager for HP Fortify On Demand. HP Fortify On Demand is a cloud-based security assessment service. We do static uh, source code assessments and dynamic web and mobile assessments. And I've spent uh, about 10 years of my career mostly doing dynamic web and mobile assessments, uh, managing the static team now, and have been an active member in the OWASP community for a long time. In fact, kind of researching for this talk, I, I looked back and, and figured out that I attended my first OWASP meeting back in 2007 at my local chapter. So why is API security, um, wh why is it important? Why does it matter? And in short, APIs are everywhere. Um, Gartner reports that there'll be an estimated 4.9 billion connected things in 2015. So we have this internet of things, we have millions of mobile applications in the various app stores. Most of these things are talking to back-end systems using APIs. We also have service-oriented architecture, and servers that are using APIs, and then you know, APIs are nothing new. We have you know, thick client applications in our enterprises that have been using APIs for communication for a long time. Then we have all these things that are talking. We have our, our cars, um, our, our light bulbs, as we were talking about in the keynote this morning, our various mobile applications, as we've been uh, reading in the news here recently, airplanes, and even from the keynote this morning, even some of our toilets that are, have various APIs for talking to back-end systems. So with all this new surface area, we have this very dangerous area. Um, there's, all the, there's this huge surface area that, um, where security is being overlooked. As we're kind of rushed to market uh, many of these mobile applications and Internet of Things project, Often security is something that gets overlooked. It's one of those afterthoughts. In fact, if you know, there's any, uh, any part of one of these mobile applications, Internet of Things applications that's going to get overlooked, it's often, um, it's often security in advance of uh, assuring that features, are, are, uh, that features are included in the product. So many of our uh, new API developers haven't had core security training. Uh, such as you know, traditional web and thick client type of uh, security auditors. And many just kind of assume security through obscurity. They assume that, the, uh, that their applications are only going to be used the way that they're intended to be used. They assume that these back-end APIs are things that, that, uh, that because they're not presented in some type of GUI system, that they don't have to worry about them. So in my time with uh, Fortify On Demand, I certainly noticed that analyzing any given API is likely to yield a significant number of vulnerabilities. In fact, I think I saw one recent study, uh, Internet of Things study, that saw that any, uh, that mentioned that any Internet of Things uh, application is likely to have five to 25 uh, vulnerabilities. So some key things to consider when you're uh, doing a security assessment of APIs a very high level testing approach. When you should acquire information and try to acquire as much information as you can from, uh, from the source of your, uh, from, from, from your customer, from your source, try to acquire any source code for any type of static review, uh, try to acquire documentation. You want to acquire documentation, not just 
for the regular APIs, but for uh, any admin functionality as well. You want to capture runtime traffic. You want to actually use the use your APIs, figure out how it's making calls, and analyze uh, its actual traffic. Then you want to use that traffic and the documentation to fully map out the API. You want to list out all the various methods that it's calling and start to think about um, what other types of methods might not be listed. Then as you get into your, your, your testing, you can certainly use a number of automated tools and then manually test, test, test. And I'll go through a lot of, thing, uh, a lot of items to consider while you're evaluating uh, your APIs. So a few things to collect. Uh, yeah, once again, you want to uh, collect source code, documentation. And from your customers, you want to uh, acquire known good request. So you want to know what values the APIs uh, are expecting. You want to ensure that you know how to call, how to make valid requests to your web services and backend systems. You know, a lot of times API testing is hard simply because the testers don't know how to make proper calls. They don't know the the order of operations or the specific parameter values that, that the backend system is expecting. So you want to um, you know, acquire known good data. And you can do some of that through, uh, through uh, your runtime traffic analysis and capturing, uh, actually using the application and capturing traffic. And you can get some of that uh, from, from the documentation and, and from your customers directly. So kind of a quick toolbox for assessing uh, APIs. Uh, the two key things that you want to ensure that you have are one, a way to capture network traffic, whether that's if you know, your API is using a web protocol, some type of HTTP editor uh, and proxy tool. Um, if it's using you know, some type of other protocol, you know, some type of you know, Wireshark or some type of other uh, network, uh, network analyzer. So you want some way to capture network traffic and then you want some way to send requests as well. And for sending requests, if that's, you know, if you're dealing with a, a web protocol, you know, one of your, uh, uh, we, you know, web proxy tools and HTTP editors uh, are very good. Um, you might have to write uh, some source code. If you're working with a, a backend system that's using you know, Java serialized objects, you might have to break down and, and write, some, write some Java code in order to interact with your API. But the two things, uh, two key things to have when assessing APIs are one, a way to capture traffic and two, a way to send traffic. And here's a quick list of some of my uh, favorite tools um, in analyzing APIs. And at the end of my presentation, I've got a whole bunch of links uh, with, uh, with some URLs to grab some of these. And I'll make sure to make the, the slides available to the conference as well. So most APIs today are using uh, the web protocol, at HTTP. Um, many of those, uh, which is true for REST and SOAP, um, you know, messages sent over the web generally have some type of format. Uh, as you're mapping out your API, you'll want to figure out what protocol your API is using, and you'll want to ensure you understand the message format, whether it's, uh, you know, for SOAP, it's uh, you know, typically XML or mandatory XML. You know, for REST, it's typically some type of JSON message. Um, you'll want to examine any online files for your for your backend system, look at any, if it's a .NET web service, look at any, you know, WSDLs or ASMX files. If it's Java, you'll want to look at your Waddle files. You want to search uh, Google for, uh, you know, any additional information on how to use the application. You can often, you know, discover uh, other APIs that, uh, that, that, you know, that, that your system, that may not have been disclosed about your system th through some quick Google searching. And then as you start to use your application uh, and capture runtime traffic, You'll want to examine those runtime uh, operations and start to think about other ways that the API um, you know, could potentially be used or some things that might not be disclosed that could be hidden in the back end. So a couple quick testing steps. One thing as you're mapping out the API, try different HTTP methods. Don't just assume that because the user provided documentation you know, and said that you had to use um, post request, don't just assume that get request won't work as well. So try other, other verbs. And don't assume that um, other HTTP verbs like put and delete won't work. As often they will, they can often lead to uh, some hidden functionality and often some really fun and interesting hidden functionality. Uh, 
So don't just assume the documentation, but actually try other methods as well. And don't just try other methods, but also try other content types as well. So uh, if you're you know, working with a, a REST-based API, don't assume that, uh, that it's only going to uh, you know, accept a JSON um, request. You know, try sending it XML or try sending it plain text and see what you get back. I found that in exploring different mobile applications that by changing the content type, I can sometimes get the application to feed back different information, um, which is quite surprising. You can send the same request, same, you know, get user type request, but formatted differently, the API can respond in different ways, often kind of disclosing uh, additional information. Cool, so that's uh, so some quick background on real high level approach to API testing. Now we'll get to the, the fun stuff and some common things that I've seen in, in testing various APIs. I've got uh, six or seven uh, common things that, that I see. And I'll walk through each of these and kind of list some major concerns, talk about a couple testing steps, and then give you some things to think about uh, in protecting your applications, uh, some things to hopefully take back, uh, take back to your own practices. So we'll start with uh, broken authentication and session management. Uh, should be no surprise. Um, you know, a number of backend APIs assume, and they quite wrongly assume, that the app will that some type of app will be the only thing that assesses it, that nobody will hit the API directly. Uh, they assume that you know, their API is only going to be used by backend systems, that no end user is going to discover it and send various types of requests. And I, you know, I've highlighted a major concern up there that there's many, many APIs out there, especially in mobile applications, that often deal with sensitive information and they have no security around them at all. Uh, just no authentication, just completely open. Um, hopefully this is obviously bad, um, <laughs> but it, it, it's absolutely worth saying because there's uh, you know, so many apps that uh, just wrongfully assume that nobody's going to hit them directly so they don't need to protect their backend resources. There's a whole other class of APIs out there that have implemented some type of framework, whether it be something like OpenID or OAuth, and they're using a really old version of one of these frameworks, or they haven't configured it uh, securely. So insecure, uh, don't, don't just assume that because you're using a framework that it's going to protect you. Um, you need to ensure that, it's, that, that you're using the latest version that doesn't uh, have known uh, serious vulnerabilities and that it's properly configured. Some other authentication and, uh, and session concerns are, are typical from the, from the web world as well. We see um, non-expiring sessions. We see session tokens that will live forever um, or live for a very, very long time, which uh, obviously increases the amount of time an attacker could have to, uh, to exploit those sessions. We see the same weak password and poor password policies that we see in front-end web applications where uh, back-end APIs don't enforce uh, strong password complexity, where they don't have some type of account lockout policy, or where they have various methods that make it possible to enumerate users, uh, which can lead to account harvesting. And then uh, the last point, uh, last bullet on this slide that I really want to point out is the uh, so many, especially mobile applications out there that have no logout or no way to expire sessions. Um, yeah, as an end user, you know, when our, our API user, as, as you're, you complete your transactions, you need some type of way to terminate a session. And so you, if your session's not, uh, not, not living on forever, and there's so many applications out there that don't have basic logout functionality. So some testing steps for looking at um, authentication. Uh, one, uh, as you're testing your APIs, try to, don't just assume that security and that authentication is required. Try to send requests with no authentication and see what happens. Um, you might be surprised in the results. Uh, you might be, uh, uh, it might be a very bad surprise that uh, the applications accept request with, with no authentication. Uh, review your authentication scheme. Make sure that the framework that's in place is the latest, uh, the latest and greatest. If, there's, if it's using an old version of OAuth or, th or something, look, look for uh, 
for known o OAuth uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, attempt all the same things that you would in a web application um, uh, with, with a web login. You know, try to use simple passwords, uh, try to brute force the account, uh, you know, test that password complexity. So some things to think about uh, for the developers in the room. Make sure that your APIs require some type of authentication. You know, please use strong passwords, up-to-date frameworks. Um, and as mentioned, please have some way to log out and terminate sessions and, and validate that those, that, that those terminations really do work. And finally, pay attention to some of your sensitive operations. So if you have a sensitive operation, something that's dealing with sensitive data, like a banking transaction or a purchase transaction, ensure uh, to pay extra, uh, extra attention to the, uh, to the authentication around that, those methods. So the next vulnerability I commonly see in APIs is information leakage. Uh, this is extremely common in mobile backends where the APIs will respond with more data than, than is requested. Apps returning all records from the database instead of just the one user that, that, was, that was requested. Uh, we also see a lack of data limiters where uh, a user can request as much data as they want. You know, request order 123, request order 124, and you can just go 125, 126, 127, and there's no, no, no back-end limits to how many records uh, a user can, uh, that, that a user can request. And then um, we also commonly see information leakage in error messages, error messages that reveal interesting information, often technical information about the back-end. So a couple fun quick examples. Uh, one is the, uh, we're at a security conference, so one is the 2014 RSA uh, mobile application which the IO Active guys blogged about um, as exposing personal data. This was a, a fun little, you know, typical conference application that was intended for users to gather information about conference sessions and venue maps um, and what have you. But there was a, its backend API had a, a method for get users that would return all of the registered users from the conference, along with a lot of their personal information, such as the company they worked for, their position in the company, uh, their company email address, a lot of their social media links to uh, places like LinkedIn and Facebook, just a, a, a treasure trove of information. So in testing for information leakage, uh, you should review all of your API responses. Um, do they return just what was requested or do they return more? If I you know, requested information about one user, did it return just that one user's information or did it return a list of all users? As you're fiddling with uh, various parameters in your APIs, try uh, not just sending uh, you know, strings as parameters, but try various wildcard values. You know, try you know, uh, typical database wildcards such as the star and uh, and, uh, and percent signs, uh, spaces, and blanks. See if, uh, see if you can figure out how the API is communicating with its backend database and see if you can trick it into returning more records uh, than intended. And then also yeah, review error messages. Do any of the error messages reveal interesting information that could lead to other types of attacks? So one quick example from my personal testing, this was a, a mobile app that I was recently testing. And this mobile app, it might be hard to see on the screen, but it had a, a customer info. Uh, this is a customer info request. And the customer info request, you send it a, a customer ID. Um, and it was you know, possible to enumerate through all those customer IDs. So I could go you know, customer 611, 612, 614, 615. And I could get you know, not just my information, but the information of all the other customers of this product. And you know, better yet was all the information that it returned about these customers. It included their name, their email address, some information about them. And if you can see that last column up there, it also returned their password hash, which I have no idea why a mobile app would need to uh, return you know, password hashes uh, you know, back, back to the client, uh, much less the password hashes of all the users of the system, uh, but, but this one did. So. <laughs> Information leakage, uh, a very serious problem with uh, mobile apps and various APIs. So, um, 
So a few things to consider uh, when, when you're developing your applications, you know, ensure that you're only returning the, uh, the requested data. Ensure that you're only returning the data that's needed. Uh, you know, review your responses for sensitive information. Um, and of course, you know, review your error messages. So another common flaw I see in APIs is hidden functionality. Um, and this typically comes about because the developers uh, assume security through obscurity. They assume that the end users are only going to use the, uh, the documented methods or the methods that are approved. They assume that the you know, users are only going to, uh, they're only going to use the APIs through, the, uh, through their mobile application or through, um, are, are through kind of approved systems and they uh, wrongfully assume that no one's going to hit these backends directly and try to, uh, try to hit undocumented methods. So when you're testing your APIs, uh, as we talked about before, uh, try other verbs. Don't just try, uh, don't just try uh, uh, the, the documented post, try a get. Try other verbs like put and delete. And then enumerate various API verbs. If there's a method for get users, also try uh, and explore and see if there is an edit user or a modify user or an add user or a delete user. You can often find undocumented methods that can often do very, very interesting things. And OWASP has a, a, a very interesting uh, Sequus project um, that has a, a, just a ton of word list. One of those word lists is a, is a common API verb, common REST verb um, list, um, which can give you some uh, real ideas for uh, for fuzzing your various APIs. So some things to consider uh, protection wise, you know, ensure that you're only exposing required methods. If you have methods, if you don't assume that because you haven't documented um, some admin function that someone's not going to find it. If you have um, other admin type functions or other sensitive operations that need to, that a common user uh, wouldn't use, consider creating a completely separate API for those um, instead of bundling them with the core API. And then for any super sensitive uh, methods, ensure that uh, you understand the authentication scheme and that you're properly protecting them. So the next vulnerability I commonly see in APIs is the lack of access control. And this also includes a lot of tampering and trust flaws. Um, and a lot of what we saw in the early days of OWASP in the web world um, and just various kind of parameter fuzzing. Often APIs uh, don't verify that the requester is, the authorized, is authorized uh, to receive whatever, that they, whatever they've requested. So this is kind of the in, in, indirect object references where you know, the, uh, where we have some type of identifying uh, ID and you know, the backend system doesn't verify that who, whoever's re that the, whoever's requesting uh, th this resource has the authorization to, to view it. Uh, so we see a number of uh, tampering issues, uh, a lot in mobile applications, where we can often tamper with parameters and change uh, not just the data that we send um, and, and receive, but also the mobile application's functionality as well can often uh, tamper with responses and get your mobile application to, uh, uh, on the client side, expose hidden functionality. Um, and then we you know, commonly see malicious uploads and downloads. So a few things to consider when you're testing uh, in, in regards to tampering and access controls, you know, intercept and modify request. So modify all your parameters just as you would in a you know, traditional web testing attempt to uh, enumerate through account numbers, user IDs, order numbers, anything that's interesting. And then don't just stop with your request, but also intercept and modify your responses, um, particularly in mobile applications. So you might find if you uh, can change various responses in a mobile application, you can get that client to behave in a different way. You might can expose uh, admin functionality or a different part of the mobile application that might not normally be exposed in the client. And you can do that using uh, you know, a, a number of tools. Uh, we had Simon up here earlier talking about the Zap. Um, Zap has uh, you know, ver various uh, fuzzers built in where you can, even in REST-based services, where you can insert between different um, injection, where you can 
uh, create your injection points between uh, uh, different insertions. So for testing, um, didn't look like this one's showing up on the screen very well. Uh, uh, but this is uh, also from a mobile application I tested recently, just um, a, a quick enumeration of user orders, where I was able to, I noticed that the mobile application I was using would return a history of the orders that I had made, um, you know, by sending a request, you know, like request order 123, 124, and if I send it, you know, 125, 126, I could get some, a, another user's orders as well. It's just very, very typical that um, APIs don't, uh, don't properly authorize their back end, uh, their back end objects. So a couple things to consider in pr uh, protecting uh, against access controls, make sure that you validate parameters and make sure that you have proper protection around sensitive information. You should review who has access to what and ensure that, om that users can only access what they're uh, supposed to access. Another common flaw in APIs is the lack of transport security. Um, uh, should be no surprise uh, that uh, by using that yeah, attackers can often man in the middle traffic on when, uh, when various systems are using insecure communication. It's, uh, yeah, we very often see uh, particularly mobile applications that are not requiring encryption, that are just sending data over plain HTTP. We see um, you know, other applications that have you know, poorly implemented SSL and TLS, and as we've seen here in the last year, um, there's you know, a number of SSL, TLS flaws, um, as we've had uh, Poodle, Shellshock, a number of other things. Uh, so want to ensure that your applications are, are, are protecting sensitive data in transport. So when you're testing your uh, mobile applications, web services, and various APIs, you want to review the network traffic you particularly want to pay attention to any sensitive information and any sensitive information that could be passing in clear text. Uh, there's a number of tools out there that you can use for checking for cipher flaws, such as SSL Digger, SSL Scan, a number of OWASP resources for uh, transport level security. And uh, this is a sample from an app I was looking at just last week. And this is bad in many ways. This is uh, a mobile application. Uh, this is a, a GET request it's sending um, for for a login. It's sending the uh, the user ID and the password right there in the uh, right there in the, in the parameter string, and it's doing it over just plain HTTP, which where if the user was connected over uh, an, an insecure network, could be easily sniffed uh, from uh, easily sniffed from a bad guy. So in protecting against transport security, just ensure that your data is protected. Um, ensure that you're not sending sensitive data in clear text. And for your, for your web backends, you know, ensure that you're um, tur turning on HTTPS and not just turning it on, but enforcing that transport level encryption as well. I commonly see that uh, backend encryption might be turned on, but it's not always enforced. So still number one on the OWASP web top 10 are uh, injection concerns, and this is also a concern in the API world as well. We see all the same things that we see in the web world with uh, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and you know, with various SOAP mes messages, we introduce a you know, whole other class of various XML injections as well, including kind of XPath injection, um, XML denial of service, where we can send you know, large payloads um, that could have, um, that could, uh, that, that could expand or, or uh, have excessive nesting or recursive content that could cause the backend server to, to DOS. And then we see um, XML uh, external entity XXE uh, injection opportunities as well. Don't assume that because your um, API doesn't natively have a, a client interface that it's not vulnerable to all the common injection flaws. Um, you know, I commonly see you know, mobile applications that have cross-site scripting flaws, and the mobile developers will tell me, well, it doesn't matter because the you know, content type that we're sending back is JSON. And it might be true if you're using the application just, in the, uh, just through the mobile client, but it may be possible to send those types of requests in other ways and exploit those in other ways. 
So all those same kind of injection concerns that we see in the web world still apply in your backend APIs and web services as well. So in testing those, uh, you know, quite simply, uh, uh, the best approach is just fuzz all parameters and, and fuzz, fuzz, fuzz some more. Um, you know, we have a number of automated you know, web utilities that can help with, with, with fuzzing, you know, from burp and, the, uh, and fuzzing techniques and zap. You can manually tamper with those requests, figure out what parameters might be interesting, and use things like the OWASP setlist project uh, to enumerate through all types of possibilities. And then obviously the protection for that is to validate all parameters. So for attacking, fuzz all parameters. For uh, protection, validate all parameters. And you want to do that, that, that validation server side um, and ensuring that uh, the, the clients adhere. Um, don't just assume that your clients are going to adhere to your API specifications. Don't assume that they're going to use uh, your API the way that it's intended to be used. Don't assume that they're going to make requests just um, just using um, uh, provided examples. So one last uh, concern, and this is uh, somewhat of a fun one and, and an all too common one, are, are, are folks that don't properly manage their API keys. And they expose those API keys um, in their mobile binaries where they hard code them or they include them in you know, Android manifest files or in iOS plist files. Um, this is nothing new. We've seen this in the, in, in the enterprise world for a long time, where a, API keys and other secrets are hard-coded into thick client applications, or they're simply stored in you know, plain text files or config files. And then um, you know, all too commonly now, we're finding API keys in online source code repositories, like GitHub and Bitbucket. And here's just a quick example of uh, a mobile application um, assessing this is a, a, an iOS application. This is a, a POS file that had uh, this application's um, Amazon Web Service um, ID key and secrets just uh, right there in plain text um, out in the out in the iOS iTunes store. Um, very very easy to find. In source code repositories, um, many of you have probably have friends that have fallen victim to these schemes. Um, I found one quick blog that I, that I wanted to highlight. I think this is a, a very, uh, uh, is worth a good read. This is a developer um, who blogged about his horror story. Um, he knew going in that he needed, that his Amazon Web Service keys were important um, and was trying to do his due diligence in protecting them. He was trying to do the right thing and as he was uploading his uh, source code to, to GitHub, he. Uh, his Amazon Web Service keys accidentally made it up there as well. Um, fortunately for him, he, rec he recognized this right away, um, was able to you know, try to rectify the situation and remove all references to those keys uh, within five minutes, thought nothing of it, and then woke up the next morning with a bill from Amazon for over 2,000 uh, American dollars. And just in those five minutes that his API keys were out in GitHub, some automated bot had found them and then spun up a, a bunch of uh, web servers. Uh, and there's a number of other stories up there. I got a couple fun links. Um, it's key management can be a very, very scary thing. So when you're testing APIs and various mobile applications, uh, search for API keys. Uh, with mobile applications, look for them in the, in the binary, run strings against your binary uh, to look for that uh, sensitive information, look in your manifest and plist files. Also review your online uh, source code repositories. You know, make sure that you're not accidentally posting sensitive information in a public, spy, in a, in a public space. And as, as reviewing these slides uh, with uh, one of my colleagues, he gave me a, a great quote. He said, everybody knows that uh, you should you know, hide your, that your key should be kept um, under a rock outside your front door. Um, uh, but in all seriousness, you know, take care in storing your keys. Know where they're stored, know how they're stored, uh, know how they're transmitted if you're, uh, if you're transmitting them uh, in some way, and know who might have access to them. So a couple quick takeaways in evaluating APIs. Uh, one, as you look at your APIs, adopt the uh, mindset of an attacker. Don't just think about how your backend web services and mobile apps should be used, but also think like an abuser and how 
um, how others and how bad guys might might uh, might use your um, your backend systems. Uh, try to identify places in your applications that could be vulnerable or could be interesting. Look for sensitive transactions. Look for interesting parameters. Uh, things like order IDs, customer information. Um, you know, enumerate through them, and don't just think of the of the use cases, but think of abuse cases. Uh, for the developers in the audience, um, please take away a, uh, the, the principle of least privilege. Uh, you should always keep this in mind uh, when, when you're doing any type of development, but I think it's uh, especially mindful uh, in, in API and, and web service development not to expose operations that aren't needed and not to expose any data that's not required. So quite simply, if the data is not needed or not required, um, you know, simply don't return it or don't use it. And then finally, um, as you're developing your backend APIs or testing APIs, leverage the OWASP resources. There's a number of OWASP projects and OWASP lists and resources that are available online that are particularly interesting. I've listed out a couple that I think are very relevant for mobile and web service testing up here. The, obviously, the web service project, some of the cheat sheets, um, the Sequest project, and the new uh, OWASP Internet of Things project as well. And finally, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I know after the session you probably won't remember my name, but you might remember my email alias. Uh, I'm Greg Patton. You can reach me at hacker at hp.com. Um, you can uh, you know, hit me up for uh, ideas and thoughts around API testing or about uh, you know, Fortify On Demand's application uh, security, assessment, um, uh, security assessment practice. You can also find uh, my hangout in the HP booth upstairs for a little while as well. And then as a, I guess a final note, I'll make my slides available to the, uh, to the community and, and through, the, uh, through the conference, but I do have a, a, a number of references and such of, uh, of tools and, and other useful links that I, think, uh, that I think you guys might enjoy. Great, so thanks, thanks so much for having me. And do we have any time for questions? Or, cool. So you have about uh, uh, just a couple more minutes if anybody has any, uh, any quick questions. Right, the question is um, centered around uh, API performance and, uh, and general kind of backend, I think, usability. Um, uh, often the APIs that are developed and, and backend services want to be very helpful. They want to return as much data a, a, as possible so we don't have to make multiple calls uh, to, to, to APIs. But as you know, our web performance has uh, improved over the years, I'd say that that's less and less necessary. And certainly, you know, keeping in mind that principle of least privilege, I do find often in mobile applications that you know, the backend mobile APIs will try to be overly helpful. Instead of just returning the user that's needed, they'll send back a whole database of all the users, that, all the users in a system, and then let the client figure out how to use those. Um, you should, yeah. Be very mindful of the data that, that, that you send back and just know that whatever you're sending um, in a response uh, is potentially exposed. Great, if anyone else has uh, other questions, I'll be hanging around the conference and I'll hang around the HP booth upstairs as well. Thanks so much for having me and uh, yeah, stay involved in OWASP. Thanks.